J.D. Vance is probably the most unlikable American I can possibly think of to run our country. Well, it turns out most Americans really hate J.D. Vance. Shocker, I know. But it's one thing to look at numbers and quantify how unlikable he is, which we will do. But it's another thing to hear from voters specifically about why they're so turned off by him. And Republican pollster Frank Lutz had a focus group with conservative leaning voters who weren't planning to vote for Biden, but they are now planning to vote for Harris. And some of these people are former Trump voters. Some of them are non-voters. And I think that they are your quintessential normies, for lack of a better word. These are the kinds of people who tend to sway elections, so their insight is really valuable, even if the sample size is really small. So they were asked why they support Harris and why they're not supporting Donald Trump. And I don't think that what they say is necessarily too surprising, but one thing that stood out to me is how vocal they were about their hatred for J.D. Vance, and they fucking hate J.D. Vance and did not hold back. So let's watch. What has Vice President Harris said or done that have turned you into a Harris supporter, at least at this moment, where you weren't supporting Joe Biden 14 days ago? Eric, I'm going to start with you. For me, it's more of an issue with Donald Trump um, and the options that are now available switched over primarily because of the lack of respect coming from one side of the Republican Party. I do believe that the far right has taken over the Republican Party. I switched because J.D. Vance scares the heck out of me and that uh, Joe was just a little bit too old to have some fresh blood and to have some focus and to have somebody who's not a misogynist has made me happy again based on you know her her um, presence her intelligence and even if i don't agree with all her policies i i trust that she'll have good judgment i actually was a trump voter in 16 and 20 and it was despite his personality and a lot of the other extra issues however when he chose jd vance it kind of uh pushed me over to having an open mind. I don't want to be taken over by Christian nationalists with Project 2025. Um, the debate was a disaster and the RNC looked like uh, a wrestling match. And J.D. Vance is probably the most unlikable American I can possibly think of to run our country. I just feel like we need to take the party back. And it's not going to happen if Trump or another Republican is in office right this second. So they don't like that the GOP has become so extreme, and it seems like J.D. Vance kind of embodies that extremism within the GOP that turns them off. One woman said that he scares the heck out of her for good reason. The guy who said that he voted for Trump twice said that Trump picking J.D. Vance is what caused him to have an open mind about voting for Democrats, which is kind of crazy to hear. And then there was the lady who was the most ruthless, who said J.D. Vance is probably the most unlikable American I can possibly think of to run our country. In other words, J.D. Vance is unquestionably bringing down the ticket. And I get that this is a small sample size again, but everything that they're saying is also represented by the data. For example, a new Fox News poll actually puts Trump ahead of Kamala Harris nationally by one point, which does make this an outlier. But nonetheless, even though this poll is good for Trump, it's still really bad for J.D. Vance because he has one of the highest net unapproval ratings with 38 percent having a favorable view of him compared to 51 percent who have an unfavorable view of him, putting him at a net 13 point disadvantage. Now, for comparison's sake, Trump is at negative six. Harris is at negative three and Walls is at plus two. So J.D. Vance is by far and away the most unpopular candidate on both tickets, and it's not even close. Now, remember when Republicans tried to make it seem like Kamala Harris made an equally disastrous decision after she announced that Tim Walls would be her running mate? Yeah, well, here's what the data says about that. As this ABC News headline puts it, J.D. Vance is more unpopular than Sarah Palin. Vance is one of the least popular vice presidential picks this century. And to demonstrate that, they show you an average of polls from 538, which puts him at a net average of 9.3 unfavorable. Now, contrast that with Tim Walls, and polling averages have him 
at a net positive of 4.7, meaning voters really like Tim Walls the more that they get to know him. Now, the opposite is happening with J.D. Vance, but here's how he measures up two previous running mates. As you can see, he is the most unliked vice presidential candidate on the Republican side since Sarah Palin, who was only at negative two. And as you can see, Tim Walls is one of the more popular picks in recent history because he actually brings something unique to the ticket. The same was true about Mike Pence, who was also pretty popular. He was viewed as this moderating force to balance out the ticket, right? Which is why voters liked him. So aside from being generally unlikable, J.D. Vance brings nothing to the ticket and he doesn't balance out the ticket in any way. And Walls does. Pence did. So all that J.D. Vance does is shore up support among Trump's most diehard supporters, but nobody new is coming on board because of J.D. Vance. In fact, the opposite is happening. Now, let's explain that on Morning Joe while talking about the focus group that we just watched. And uh, what he has to say is very interesting to me. It seems like J.D. Vance played a big role in um, the changes and shifting attitudes in this campaign. <laughs> Well, what's happening right now is that initially when Joe Biden was the Democratic nominee, Trump was playing on his turf, reaching out to his voters. And that's why you saw two, three, maybe even a four point advantage for Trump. These were people who were disappointed, disengaged with the Democratic Party. Now it's exactly the opposite. These are ex-Republicans, ex-conservatives who are looking at Trump and his personality, the whole Trump fans ticket. And they're saying, this is not what I want. I want to be clear about this. The two issues that matter most are immigration and inflation. And on those issues, Donald Trump still has the advantage over Harris. But on these personality traits, Harris has a tremendous advantage over Trump. And there are people who had voted for Trump in 2020 that will not vote for him again because they're tired of his rude and abusive behavior. He is literally losing this election. And I'm starting to wonder, does he want to lose? Is this something that's going on mm -hmm. inside his head mm -hmm. simply because he doesn't want to be president for four more years? Because no sane person mm -hmm. would campaign the way Donald Trump is campaigning. Just to remind you, Frank Lutz is a Republican. And he's not saying this about Trump because he's a Trump hater. He's saying this about Trump because he wants Trump to win. And it doesn't seem like Trump wants Trump to win. Now, had Trump chosen a more normal VP to balance out the ticket and to provide a contrast with his brash, idiotic personality, he might not be doing as bad. But the problem with J.D. Vance is that he can't even pretend to be the running mate that Trump needs him to be because he is the person that we all see. And I say this because when he was asked about one of the most important issues to women, Look at how he smugly dismisses it. Senator, one of my dear friends um, tonight said to me, well, the, all these suburban women, uh, said, all these suburban women, all they care about is abortion and they don't understand that decision is with the states now. It's not banned nationally, even if, if people, some people want it to be banned nationally. It's with the states. What do you say to suburban women out there who are, are marinating in this propaganda? Well, first of all, I don't buy that, Laura. I think most suburban women care about the normal things that most Americans care about. He just can't help himself. Their reproductive rights is a normal thing that they do indeed care about. Now, the fact that he doesn't have a better answer for this by now shows you how bad he is. Listen, even if it comes off as pandering, if I'm J.D. Vance right now, I'm going full Clinton 2016 and talking about how much we love women and we stand with women and respect women, because even if voters don't believe you, they'll get the sense that you're trying to make an effort. But right now, you're just talking past them and pretending to know what they care about. And I can promise you, it's pissing them off. But he can't even fake it. And this is why weird is an attack that stuck. And what's even hilarious about that is Trump is also sensitive to the weird attacks and he's trying to throw J.D. Vance under a bus and make it seem like when Democrats call Republicans weird, they're talking about J.D. Vance. So during a conversation that Trump was having with donors, as the New York Times reports, when a donor at the roundtable discussion asked about Democrats trying to paint the Republican ticket as weird, Mr. Trump replied, not about me, they're saying that about J.D. So needless to say, even Donald Trump knows that J.D. Vance was a disastrous pick, but I mean, you're stuck with him. Sorry, man, you've got to carry him to term. I don't make the rules. But yeah, 
needless to say, Americans just don't like him. And he's very obviously bringing down the ticket. But to be clear, J.D. Vance being an extremist weirdo isn't the only issue. Because remember, the same lady from the focus group that said Vance was the most unlikable American also said that she doesn't want to be taken over by Christian nationalists with Project 2025. That is a concern to voters. And that's a legitimate concern. And even Trump. You know, he knows that this is a concern, which is why he's tried to distance himself from Project 2025. But that doesn't change the fact that his fingerprints are all over it. He implemented 64 percent of the Heritage Foundation's policy recommendations the last time that he was president. And he bragged about it. And we have no reason to think that he wouldn't do the same again when it comes to Project 2025, especially for the fact that a lot of the people from Project 2025 were in, in his administration and they'd likely be in his administration again. So that's in part why nobody believes him when he says he doesn't know anything about Project 25, as he calls it. You know, he's had a long running relationship with the Heritage Foundation, who spearheaded the movement. And they're also just really bad at hiding it, which makes it more difficult for him to feign ignorance. For example, this Media Matters headline says it all. Quote, a Trump official criticized the media for talking about Project 2025, which has nothing to do with our campaign. She worked on Project 2025. So very convincing. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, the Center for Climate Reporting released a video where they pose as donors and they interview Russell Vought, who was the OMB director under Donald Trump. Now, he's also heavily involved in Project 2025, and he would likely be in Trump's second administration if he got one. So just listen to what he says when he thinks that nobody is going to hear what he's saying. But behind closed doors, vote tells us not to take Trump's disavowal seriously. I, I expect you to hear 10 more times from the rally, the president, you know, distancing himself from the left's boogeyman of Project 2025. Yeah. Um, and you're not worried about that? I'm not worried about it. Okay. He's running against the brand. He is not running against any people. Okay. Uh, he is not running against uh, any institutions. It's interesting. He's, in fact, not even opposing himself to a particular policy. Yeah. He's been at our organization. He's raised money for our organization. He's blessed it from the, you know, I remember walking into our last day in office and told him what I was going to do. So he's very supportive of what we do. And for vote, Trump's pick for vice president shows he's serious about pushing this ideological agenda when in power. So I am very happy with the J.D. pick. I, I think it's transformative for sure. Yeah. Um, and he's, you know, he think of him as a member version of what we do. Yeah. So there's no think tank, no policy organization, no battle plan creator other than us for the worldview that I think Donald Trump has and that uh, J.D. has. But as public backlash against these plans builds, the Trump campaign has been scrambling to distance themselves from Project 2025's authors. It's complete and utter bullshit okay. for any reporter to write that this is the way it is. The president's made it clear these people do not speak for him. They do not speak for the campaign. But Vote tells us that behind the scenes, things are much friendlier. The Trump campaign recently picked him to write the Republicans' policy platform, making him essentially Project 2025's man on the inside. I think the best example is like the campaign selected me to be the platform uh, because of their, their views on my policy ideas and they're not running from all of the negativity that I get from the press. I see. So they haven't been spooked on you as a person, you don't think? No, I mean, I, I, no. I, I don't think I'm going to be their transition pick because okay. then they have all these kinds of stories. Yeah. But no, the relationship is great. The head of the Trump transition team has not yet been appointed. But Vote says that no matter who is named, he'll be able to hand over his Project 2025 battle plans directly. If it's someone like Stephen Miller or Bob Lighthizer, then all the stuff gets uh, plugged right in. They got him dead to rights. And the people concerned about Project 2025 should be more worried now that J.D. Vance is on the ticket with Donald Trump. And as much as Trump tries to distance himself from Project 2025, their organizers are very confident that they will be able to implement their agenda if he does get a second term. And I'm only showing you just a small portion of that report. I'll link to the full thing down below if you want to watch it. But Vought also laid out some goals. Listen. I think you have to rehabilitate Christian nationalism. You have the largest deportation in history. Block funding for Planned Parenthood. Yeah, so the woman in the focus group 
who said that she was worried about Christian nationalism, was right to be worried about it. This is an explicitly undemocratic ideology that cannot coexist with the current Constitution. It either requires a complete disregard for the Constitution at best or regime change at worst. So all of this, the extremism, Project 2025, the weirdness, it's why voters who we heard from, they've jumped ship, right? You don't often see a lot of voters jumping ship but since this switch occurred and since Kamala became the candidate, a lot of them have jumped ship. These are people who are typically very open to conservative policies, but they're turned off by the far right extremism. And they're also sick and tired of Trump's antics. That's another thing that they pointed out. And since Kamala Harris is presenting them with a younger, more dynamic, sane alternative, that's why she has so much momentum currently. That's why non-college educated white voters and suburban women are gravitating towards Kamala Harris because she represents something completely different at a time when voters desperately want to turn the page on Trump and Biden and all of the politicians who just won't go away. But again, a new face doesn't automatically do the trick because we all know they fucking hate J.D. Vance too. He's the GOP equivalent of Hillary Clinton and I could not be happier that Trump chose this weird little freak as his running mate because it increases the chances that Kamala Harris can actually pull off a win. So that's just one, you know, voter group. Uh, there's a lot of focus groups that will come out. I like to watch these because I think that listening to normies gives us a lot of insight into what they're thinking and how Democrats should message. But I mean, what they're saying here is very interesting. And they are very, very clear when they say they do not like J.D. Vance. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.